thank you uh, everybody for joining in i see a very uh, very large number of people who have joined in and uh, we are really uh, delighted that there is so much interest uh, bml ta is a very old subject and pooja is going to take us very quickly through a history but this is to educate the citizens mobility is the biggest issue that the city is facing today and uh, it is very very imperative that uh, we all collectively address this issue of bmlta a lot of work has already been done a number of consultations have been held and dulta has taken a, a huge step forward in having multiple rounds of discussions taking all inputs uh, from citizens and then uh, taking it forward to the cm's office now we hope that uh, with all these discussions and the focus uh, we will be able to you know, see the light of day for this particular bill there is still some work to go and this discussion will focus on uh, what is happening in other cities uh, how we are uh, positioned right now and what are the further steps we need to do to make bmlta a reality and i hope all our citizens will support us in this endeavor thank you very much and with that Uh, very quickly um, i will pass this on to uh, pooja who will take us through a few uh, a few slides on bmlta for those uh, citizens who may not necessarily be aware so that we all become aware but a lot of you uh, are well aware you have provided your valuable inputs to bmlta but this is really for those people who may not be fully aware and who need to understand that this is a very very important bill for the city and to solve its mobility problems yeah over to you pooja do it very quickly yes. and uh, sharad please let us know as soon as uh, we have uh, uh, our chief guest uh, dr ashwat narayan in he just dropped off so do let us know as soon as he is in thank you yes so yes rightly taking it ahead uh, i'll quickly wrap up this presentation for the most uh, important discussion for today uh, next slide uja i think you should manage the slides uh amrut is uh, i'll i'll request can, can you can you uh, give the controls to pooja please Yes, ma'am. He is doing it. Yes, thank you. So, uh, by welcoming everyone to the session and also our audiences who are joining now, uh, and uh, quickly, I'll just summarize what how the presentation and the whole flow of uh, today's uh, discussion will go. Uh, like uh, with a present with a quick presentation of ten minutes uh, with on the context setting and understanding about the BML table. and uh, next 10 minutes we'll hand it over to dr c n ashwath narayan who, who will uh, do the keynote address and uh, the 50 minutes discussion on panel discussion of uh, a need of the r to provide commuter centric and seamless uh, and uh, inclusive mobility network that is bmlta on the bill on current status and how we can proceed it further uh, we have the panel we have the list of panel members today who are present along with us will be joining as well in further of the discussion and the last 15 minutes will be allocated for the q and a session and throughout the session also i i would request all our audience to please drop in your q and a's we would uh, we would take it in the discussion as well in the middle and also take the give 15 minutes very specific to answering all the q and a from our audiences uh, yes uh, next slide so understanding the current uh, mobility scenario in the bangalore it's not that uh, it's uh, i guess almost all of us here who are present here as audience and panelists know that what is happening today with uh, mobility scenario in bangalore if one one decides to take a public transport he has to definitely travel around half an hour to board as bus or metro and that half an hour if he decides to walk there is absence of footpaths park vehicles on footpaths or encroachment by hawkers and construction debris and lack of seamless integration of public transport 
Sanskrit school and definitely lack of first mile and last mile connectivity. And if he if once decide as a uh, take his first mile last mile or the entire journey as on a cap, it would it would show as almost rupees two hundred for a six minutes travel in the peak hours. That that must the costlier uh, mobility scenario is being seen uh, is being seen in Bangalore and also the most congested city in the uh, world. Uh, next slide. So, uh, which has led to the which has led to ranking around uh, sixth most congested city in the world. Around uh, uh, around an average, uh, uh, a Bengalurian spends around six days in a year uh, to uh, six days in a year in the traffic congestion uh, city, and uh, which has led to which has or uh, it is responsible by with uh, of all the exponential uh, vehicular growth and coupled with slacking public transport network. And uh, definitely, I, I would not say that none of our traffic, our, our mobility agencies are doing anything. Definitely, they are working towards it. Like it, it might be our BMTC, BMRCL, BDA, transport department. Yes, definitely, they are all working. Even the traffic department to say everybody is working, but all of them are working in silos today. Yes, uh, if we can quickly jump to next slides. Next slide. Yes. So uh, yes. So staying on to that, like the, like now it is that multiplicity of all the institutions and departments overlap of, uh, in the responsibility and functions, which impedes the process of planning and implementation with no single local authority to plan and regulate the transport, uh, transport services in the, in the city. Citizens lose out and mobility, uh, commuter centric and seamless uh, mobility in the experience in the city, which has uh, which has led to uh, which has led to the current situation. As I say, uh, buses are operated by the BMTC and uh, the bus stops are uh, uh, planted by our uh, are put set up by our BBMP, whereas BMRCL is putting on their um, uh, metro station. But none of them are coordinated, and we and we don't see any integration happening with the public transport as well. So which which is currently lacking today and uh, which has led to overall uh, overall formation of the BMLTA that is Bengaluru Metropolitan Land Transport Authority uh, is which is the need of the current situation to, to coordinate the, all this urban mobility activities in the city. Yes, next slide. Yes. Uh, Looking that, looking into that, that there is a need for the coordination of all our uh, uh, metro buses. It might be cycles, to get, or to all of them to coordinate. We need a BMLTA. So we're definitely talking about BMLTA, it is not a new topic at all. It has been around 14 to 15 years that uh, Bangalore Metropolitan Land Transport Authority needs to be there in any uh, any city. It was back in 2006. Six, where UNTA came into picture, that is Unified Metropolitan Transport Authority. Uh, the, the National Urban Transport Policy was formulated and one of its trend was uh, to decentralize urban transport pl uh, uh, planning by Urban Metro Transport Authority, that is UNTA. And in 2007, Government of Karnataka established uh, DULT. In 2008, BMLTA constituted uh, the na national, national Urban Transport Policy Guidelines. According to that, in 2010, first draft of BMLTA bill was prepared by DULT. In 2016, um, uh, MOA prepares the MOA model of UMTA bill along with the operational guidelines as well to adopt for all the cities which are recommended to have UMTA. And in 2021, next slide, it has recently gotten, uh, got, uh, gotten up uh, into reformulation of a bill by DULT. Uh, uh, and uh, an overarching body with uh, which will be the ultimate authority in the transport governments in the Bengaluru metropolitan region. The bill was vetted twice. Different departments, including the finance department, all, uh, have already given their opinion. The formation of the new government in July 2021 met uh, new ministers and that needs to be consulted. And since then, there has been no much progress which has happened. Because of all of this, this bill has never gained uh, or seen its light of the Day. And the bill uh, and the BMLTA definitely may be a step to recognize the transport governance uh, has not uh, seen much progress since then. And incidentally, uh, Unified Transport Authority was one of the 42 promises which was made by BJP government in their manifesto in 2018 in Namma Bengaluru, Namma Vachana. Uh, as if it is one of their promises, probably this is the right time we get the BMLTA bill tabled 
is uh, is one of the input which we get from the promises so let us understand what has happened across the country on uh, different uh, unified metropolitan transport authorities out of 53 15 of the eligible cities have created uniform metropolitan transport authority but only handful of cities have probably seen some of the move towards its establishment and i uh, largely no, uh, none of them have achi achieved much success because they don't uh, because without any executive orders and without any legislative backup uh, they have not able to commit uh, what they were supposed to uh, what they were supposed to be done under the moha uh, moa guidelines uh, so understanding about others uh, other cities uh, coming to mumbai delhi hyderabad chennai uh, in Mumbai, uh, in, uh, it was formed in 2008 and uh, without uh, any uh, statutory uh, body or uh, empowered status, it has not filled any of the national mandate. In Delhi, it was formed in 2006, which has limited uh, of its operations only for uh, bus operations and bus, bus cluster operation, not more than the Delhi, and it has not much of the say in the Delhi Transport Corporation. Whereas Hyderabad, it has again become a toothless body without uh, like leading to more, more conflicts and, uh, and wars between different agencies. And in Chennai, uh, it was it was in 2010 where the act got passed, but uh, in uh, 2020 uh, the act was amended in September 2020 uh, because uh, there was some administration uh, administration uh, 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 look into it to be need uh, to be needed. The state government is likely to introduce a crucial amendment to oper operationalize uh, Kumta with the aim at uh, restructuring the administration process of. Kumta and it is uh, the first board meeting is yet to happen. Whereas if this is all the status of other uh, cities across the country, uh, currently in uh, currently Kochi, that is Kerala Metropolitan Transport Authority is the first agency of its kind in India to have full fledged legislative backup and, uh, and was constituted in November 2020. And, and it has made its first move uh, by having the world's first mobility network. So the Kochi got its mobility open mobility network uh, on uh, July 2021, uh, which is aiming to integrate and regulate the urban mobility systems in incorporating parking, integrating uh, uh, communities, uh, commuting from ferries to metros to buses and to even rent bicycles and also to find your even even your ev charging stations definitely even kmta is following its own challenges of funding and other uh, I, 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 and other uh, supporting staff and all of it but yet it has made its first move in creating uh, kumta uh, in creating kumta just uh, uh, showing up in in depth on what is happening with uh, KOMN, KO that is Kochi Open Mobility Network, where it is uh, trying to, where it is trying to integrate all the Kochi passengers, existing service providers. It may be cab service providers, it may be your bicycle service providers, all the first mile, last mile service providers, even with the public transport service providers, and also the Kochi dri drivers who are uh, who are doing uh, who are doing the cab part of it. Uh, and now all the customers can access the taxi services in the city and also uh, and for a local uh, driver they are, uh, they are it is easy for them to be in the open field with less marketing cost and more visibility without any third party charges or commissions in between which has kind of created a fair world and by uh, integrating all the parking slots or uh, to find the ev charging stations even to rent bicycles everything has come into a one open mobility network uh, with uh, with uh, Kumta, so this is what is happening with uh, Kerala currently ha having uh, Kumta uh, uh, currently. If Kerala can do it, if Kochi can do it, definitely Bengaluru can get uh, can do it. All of them. So just a deep understanding on what is the what is the organization structure of Bengaluru Metropolitan Land Transport Authority. Uh, most of us might know about the structure, what BMLTA does. It is for the larger uh, citizen attention that I'm quickly bringing these things on uh, on today's discussion. Uh, it, uh, the, it will have mem 21 members uh, from, the from the state government and the central government, where Chief Minister of Karnataka will be the chairperson. Uh, all, uh, also, the ministers of Bengaluru Development and Transport and other vice chairperson uh, will be the vice state persons mayors from the mayor of bbmp urban development department transport department public works women and child department police department bbmp bda 
uh, and uh, BMRDA, B-Ride, BMRCL, all of them will be also part of it, um, of the 21 members. And uh, uh, there will be special invites, that is two invites from uh, Southwestern Railway and non-official members, which we have to note that there will be 10 non-official members, three experts from urban mobility, two representatives from civic society, three representatives from the institutions representing private sector and professional bodies and two representatives from academic institutions so out of 33 members 10 or 10 will be independent uh, in this and uh, all the 21 plus 10 that is 31 members will have their voting voting rights as well to decide upon any of the further powers uh, uh, and the functions done by BMLTA. So uh, next slide. So understanding the duties, functions, and powers, it will have its say in the governance, it uh, tra transport governance, policy and planning, uh, delivery and monitoring uh, and oversight of the any urban transport projects. And also it evaluates the outcomes of any uh, project taken. It will have the power to direct urban transport agencies, infrastructure development agencies, and traffic management agencies, and also the power to approve any major urban transport project, any major tra urban project, uh, transport project, it might be roads, it might be our flyovers, it might be our steel flyovers. All of these, uh, all of these flyovers have, uh, or any of the urban related transport related project needs to get their approval from BMLTA. Uh, which is one of the important power which is currently needed and uh, the funding of BMLTA will be on the on uh, of the imp of the implementation of the act will be uh, in purpose and uh, a state government will also contribute a seed fund with uh, with the establishment of the authority a proportion of existing and future revenue sources will also be allo allocated to BMLTA for the funding of it which will be further described in the rules and regulations after the bill is passed and understanding some of the policies and how the comprehensive mobility plan will be made. Uh, it says that uh, uh, for every five years, the, the CMP, that is comprehensive mobility plan, will be revised. And every every year, the uh, CMIP, that is city mobility investment uh, investment program, will be made along with the sectorial mobility investment program, which is which will be the sectorial mobility investment program, which will be prepared by all the transport agencies for every year. And uh, with having the aim of CMP of five years as a target, every year a sectorial mobility plan will be made. Together, an annual implementation plan every year will be done along with the stakeholders and uh, with the approval of BMLTA uh, on uh, uh, on having uh, on to achieve the goals of CMP and also a traffic management plan will be prepared uh, every year, uh, which will have the detailed traffic flow plan, it will have the enforcement plans, it will have the parking management plans. All of this will be done every every year in the segment form to achieve the goal of five years or in the CMP. So next. Uh, so understand, uh, understanding all of this, the BMLTA will also give a lot of uh, importance for public consultation as well. Any uh, any of the uh, any of the projects or any of the policies uh, with, that will be made further will be maximum uh, will be put out for public consultation for a maximum period of two months from the date of publication of the notice. And the draft will also give a voting power to civic societies on transport projects in Bengaluru, which is one of the important uh, area which we have to know. The voting power will be given of the uh, given to those 10 uh, non uh, non members from the uh, independent members will also get the voting power to decide the transport projects in Bengaluru. So which uh, uh, which is one of the important area to be noticed. Next. Yes, uh, by uh, all of this, uh, BM, what I would say is BMLTA may not be the only solution, definitely a step closer to have a sustainable and seamless uh, mobility in the city, uh, which is currently, which is the need. So with, along with this, we are starting a I support BMLTA campaign. Uh, yeah, keep watching to uh, BPAC and BPAC all social media channels, which we, where we are running through uh, I support BMLTA campaign uh, from uh, coming uh, Monday. And uh, with this, I would like to open up this panel discussion on uh, Bengaluru Metropolitan Land Transport Authority, a need of the hour to provide commuter-centric, seamless, and inclusive mobility. So, yes. Thank you, thank you Pooja. Uh, thank you, thank you, Pooja. Uh, we have uh, now with us, uh, I think, the DALT Commissioner, uh, Madam Manjula, and we will shortly have Dr. Ashwat Narayan, who may be joining us any minute. We will uh, uh, 
uh, both of them uh, have short times. So I would request Madam Manjula to say a few words and Dr. Ashwat Narayan, as soon as he joins, he will give us uh, a kind of keynote address. So Madam Manjula, maybe you could tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, where it is and uh, how much of effort has gone in and how much of consultation, public consultation you have done and to take, take care that all the inputs from citizens are taken and all other stakeholders uh, inputs have been taken. So uh, would really welcome a few words from you. Is, is Madam Manjula on? Uh, hello, sorry, uh, I think I'm... Your video is off. Your yeah, yeah. video is off. You'll have to switch it on. Right. Manjula? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, you know, the brief presentation has summarized certain aspects of the BMLTA bill. Um, see, the main objective of the BMLTA bill is to ensure that there is a unified vision so far as the realm of mobility is concerned. Um, and all the agencies that are working are working towards achieving that vision. So that is the main objective of this. And as you mentioned, there is a comprehensive mobility plan. The mobility plan may have various, uh, you know, in interventions and initiatives which have been, uh, you know, included. But many times what happens is that because of the lack of a uh, coordinating body or agency, some of the things that are included in the CMP may not be considered as priority by some departments. So with the BMLTA coming to picture, we do hope CMP will be more effective instrument because it is not just a mobility plan. It also becomes a, it also has a component of, uh, it, it has a city investment plan as its component. And there is an annual uh, kind of a review with an annual implementation plan. So every department is expected to uh, tailor make uh, its plans uh, to uh, to include the kind of activities or initiatives um, which have been uh, proposed in the CMP. So the CMP becomes a common document that is kind of shared by or uh, that becomes the you know that plan document for all the departments concerned. So the main issue is that to bring in a bring in some synergy between various uh, departments, their plans ensure the priorities remain the same for all the departments. It's not that one department want, uh, wants to plan for cycle lane, the other department wants to have a wider road for vehicles. So it is it has to lead to a synergy. So there are common policies that are uh, agreed to and uh, accepted for the city. So we need to decide that first, whether Bangalore would be a walk walkable, cyclable city, or it is going to be a kind of congested waterized city. And once the vision is set, all the activities should work towards it. So that was the main uh, thing about the BMLTA. Now, um, the other aspects of BMLTA is that there, it is headed by the Honorable Chief Minister. So natural, and there are various ministers and various departments which are part of it. Therefore, there is a, some kind of, a, you know, from the top down, there is, there is an authority to whatever is decided in this. It also kind of ensures that they are not, um, there is no need for multiple coordination committees. What generally happens today is that on multiple issues, you have multiple coordination uh, committees. So something is on traffic, something is on infrastructure, something is on something else, while these are all related. So having one comprehensive uh, committee, one committee that looks into one authority that kind of looks at all these issues and tries to kind of um, bring them together, that is what is envisaged in this. And it's also understood that authority itself will not be in a position to meet very often. So there is an executive committee under the chief secretary. So what is the difference you may ask between having a BMLT and not having a BMLT, BMLTA? Many things which are put in the BMLT Act, some of them we do also as, as today, you know, BMLT as an executive committee, Many things are being done. There is a parking policy. There are parking plans being prepared. 
But what is the difference? The difference is that the BMLTA bill once passed gives a statutory backing to decisions that are taken so that no department can disagree with them for some reason at a later stage. Uh, this does not really eat into the independence of the department. So in the sense, implementation is not taken over by the BMLTA. BMLTA is not going to construct uh, bus shelters or kind of you know make some infrastructure. It is a planning organization. It is a monitoring organization. For example, service level benchmarking. So BMLTA would be responsible for negotiating with various stakeholder agencies on what should be the kind of service levels that would aspire to achieve uh, within a particular time, maybe one, one year down the line, two years down the line, and then monitor whether they are achieved. So these are the kind of functions that we uh, that are anticipated. There is a funding also, uh, some funding uh, fund with the BMLTA, but I wouldn't say that is, <clears throat> I mean, that depends on uh, what kind of uh, resources or uh, revenues are generated. Generally, the funding comprises of some CESAs and premium FAR, et cetera, and some budgetary contributions in case the state government decides to give that. It doesn't subsume the budgets of various organizations. It only gives a direction to various organizations on how they should use their money. So that is what it is. Uh, in terms of what all has gone through, it is in public domain. It has been discussed, it, many comments have come. Some comments were for it, some comments are against it, and so many, but uh, all the necessary comments have been taken into consideration. Apart from the CMP, the other important thing that we have included in BMLTA is about ensuring land use transport integration. Now, there is a section on the BMLTA which clearly says that the master plan prepared by the planning authority has to come to BMLTA. And BMLTA has to verify it from the perspective of whether it takes into account land use and transport integration. If not, BMLTA can ask the planning authority to make necessary changes, give its suggestions, and then the planning authority is expected to uh, indicate uh, how many it has been able to kind of consider, uh, how many it is not able to consider, and what are the reasons. And with that, with BMLTA's, BMLTA's opinion only, it will go to the government. So these are the kind of, uh, I know, changes that have been made. Um, so Revati, I'll stop here. And yeah, I have a couple of questions, uh, uh, Madam Manjula. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things, one of the concerns people had uh, uh, said was, how will the relationship of the Metropolitan Planning Commission uh, be with the BMLTA? Will BMLTA sort of supersede the uh, CM, uh, the uh, MPC? So maybe you can throw a little light on, uh, and you did allude to it right now, that this, is, this has got to be a coordination between agencies because uh, nobody can do anything in isolation. So maybe you can throw some more light on that? See, the Metropolitan Planning Committee has a wider thing no it is also yes. Uh, yes it also looks into various other things not Correct. just Correct. mobility right yes so yes. i don't think you know having a bmlta is kind of uh and the metropolitan planning uh, committee is also headed uh you know by the chief minister if i remember correctly so yes therefore i don't see any kind of a and that's a bigger committee so you don't yes. expect that committee to look into mobility issues on a much more uh, you know detailed basis i don't yes. see any conflict in this yeah definitely bmlta is much more maybe it is focused on mobility while the metropolitan planning committee is looking at various other things also and no, what are, and the where are we saying that uh, be whatever the plans that are prepared that for example the cmp nobody nobody is saying that it will not be shared with the metropolitan planning committee or etc so uh, the question is that UMTA, the Unified Metropolitan Transport Authority. So it is a, it's a body that grows. This, today we give examples of Transport for London, for example. Now Transport for London today has all the stakeholders, you know, it kind of manages rail, manages, you know, bus transport and so on and so forth. Today we may not be there. We start with planning. We start with coordinating, uh, you know, ensuring that unified vision is there and certain goals are set and these are measured and evaluated maybe a few years down the line uh, the bmlta will become 
at, uh, similar to transport for London, because every, you know, every organization requires some kind of a maturity to be able to play that role. It's not that simply today you put everything together and you say it will function well. So I don't see any conflict in that. And definitely, I think having a BMLTA is a step in the right direction. Thank you. Yes, yes. Yes. So uh, I think uh, the reason why I raised was before we put, put together this, uh, uh, this open public panel discussion uh, uh, for public, we had an expert consultation and some, some people had expressed some concerns. And that's why I thought I should, we understand this as BPAC and we, many others understood it, but there were some concerns expressed and I thought uh, we should raise this in this forum that uh, it doesn't mean that BMLTA will just go and do something else without regard to what the Metropolitan Planning Commission is saying, because uh, transport is integral to the overall planning uh, of the city. So uh, that's 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 what I want to do. Uh, and uh, you know, there it's also you know somebody has created a I mean, raised a question, saying that BMLTA is trying to create its own comprehensive mobility plan, which is independent of the city master plan. And I had made that point. That's not been, uh, you know, that is not going to happen because now we have said, whenever the master plan is prepared, the planning authority is supposed to share it with BMLTA, and it is, uh, you know, imperative or you know required on the part of the BMLTA to examine whether there is a transport and land use integration. So only when the BMLTA and if BMLTA has certain concerns on whether there is a land use transport integration. It is expected to you know, kind of indicate that to the planning authority. So that particular section has been included in the BMLTA to ensure that the master plan, because finally it is the master plan which is the which is setting a vision on in which direction the city is going and where people stay is also important, at, you know, to decide on how do they move, right? And whether it is in transit-oriented development or in any of the strategies that we are talking about in terms of land use transport integration, we are following the paradigm that if you can avoid a trip by a motorized vehicle, we should do that. So avoid shift and, and you know, improve. These are the kind of, uh, you know, pillars of transportation. So we are also looking at how do you ensure greater densities through TOD, uh, you know, transit oriented development around the mass transit stations. All, and all this is not divorced from the uh, land use plan. So transport and land use have to be integrated and that would be the major functions and objectives of BMLTA. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Madam Manjula. I think that is exactly the point that we had also highlighted in the uh, uh, internal uh, roundtable that we had about a week ago. Uh, but I'm glad that you clarified that once again, because uh, we want to ensure uh, that uh, all concerns are allayed. And we really set the stage for BMLTA to not get stuck anymore because this is a crying need for the city. Uh, if we have uh, a metro station coming up, all other agencies that are involved, whether it be uh, creating the necessary road infrastructure, the bus stop infrastructure, the bus buses themselves, all of that is needs to be properly integrated. And uh, if there is a, a footpath that is to be created, all of these are managed by different agencies and they must work together to ensure that when the big, big infrastructure is being put up, all the last mile connectivity is also taken care of. So I think uh, BMNTA hopefully will facilitate these kinds of coordination efforts so that people have more seamless uh, 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 commute. Mm. Uh, can you talk a little bit? I know you're very, very short of time. And therefore, before going to other people, I want to ask you a couple more, more questions. One of the concerns has been the failure of UMTA in various places because it is seen as a kind of a toothless body and more recommendatory in nature and nobody really follows. Neither they, do they have the rights, nor the responsibility, nor the budgetary allocations to push certain infrastructure uh, uh, projects through. Implementation is definitely the uh, responsibility of the respective authorities, but really deciding the allocation of uh, funds between various types of projects would be the BMLTA's uh, domain. So how do we make this more effective? 
and puja did show there are other cities that have gone through it there are still concerns are they effective enough or you role you spoke about the maturity of organization is it are these organizations they have started and they are going on their maturity curve there are two things one is that uh, cmp by itself is one way of ensuring some uh, you know kind of uh, integration of plans of various authorities because after cmp we are talking about an annual implementation plan so each department each stakeholder will prepare an annual implementation plan uh, where they will indicate what are they going to take up in that particular year and how much funds they are going to earmark etc and this would be derived out of whatever are the you know activities or interventions recommended in the cmp so to that extent at that level because this annual implementation plans are finalized in consultation with bmlta there is some way of ensuring that these plans get uh, taken forward in terms of fund bmlta will also have a bangalore urban uh, you know manage the bangalore urban transport fund where you all the land value capture uh, the funds that are generated through the assessors on land value capture and you know premium far etc will flow into this fund so there will be some fund which can and government may also give certain budgetary allocation so with this fund uh, certain activities and you know the bmlta can fund some interventions some priorities which it thinks it uh, are important and some innovative interventions and so so on that's the second aspect of it and the third aspect of it is in terms of as i mentioned service level benchmarking and nudging people uh finally you know it depends also on how effectively bmlta functions so it 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 at this point of time yes uh, we don't have very good examples within our country uh, where you know omtas have really done extra extraordinary work but that should not be the reason to not go with it so hopefully with time um once the you know initial kind of resistance or initial reluctance kind of starts fading because every organization also needs to gain expertise and experience right just putting a bmlta and expecting it to kind of do wonders will not help so we do hope over a period of time that reluctance and resistance will kind of wane away but as i mentioned there is a fund attached to the bmlta and bmlta can also raise resources so it can raise loans etc so that is also feasible to be done through the bmlta so i'm Uh, that is my answer to your question right yeah. right uh, my last question which is of course a burning question in everybody's mind as to uh, where do you think uh, you have done all the work uh, hard work you have done several consultations you have tried to address all the key issues and now uh, it is as we understand it is with the chief minister's office uh, do you uh, in your opinion uh, are there any unresolved issues that is holding it up or it is just people like us giving it that extra push and citizens telling him how important it is it is likely to move okay um, before i answer this question one point also i want to stress that in the bmlta bill there is also provision to levy fines and penalties so the regulation the directions given by the bmlta have to be kind of complied with and if they are not you know complied with there is a provision to kind of if there is a failure to comply even if there are state government departments and agencies certain fines can be levied so that is another way the you know bmlta can exercise its uh, i won't say authority it's 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 a mandate to ensure that there is a greater synergy in between plans of various stakeholders now this particular from our end we have that completed all the consultations it has also been discussed in uh, the executive committee bmlta committee that we have which is a you know been constituted by an executive order it has been cleared all stakeholders have given their comments their comments have also been taken into consideration some have been agreed to some may not have been agreed to but they've all been considered um it is now it's been submitted to the government and we are awaiting uh, you know and it's been vetted by the law department also the only final step is for it to be uh, kind of taken to the legislature that is where we are okay so has it gone uh, as i understand it has to go to the parliamentary affairs committee right uh, so all that has also happened 
Yeah, they have already vetted it once or twice. So this final right. thing is there. So the final, right. uh, there not be will not be much changes. So they have to just okay. put it before a scrutiny committee. That's a government right. procedure, and right. subsequently it will be passed before placed before the legislature. Okay. 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 Well, I think Bangalore is always suffering from changes in government, and every time we think a major uh, uh, major step is being taken forward. It just gets stuck because we have some change in government and priorities change. We hope uh, people understand that mobility is a key priority for the city. And as you said, having a vision that first people should be able to walk and then any non-motorized transport and then motorized transport being the vision of the MLTA, hopefully we are able to uh, achieve that vision. And madam, you're free to stay as long as you want. We can have as many questions. I'm sure people have very question, uh, many questions still, but I, I know I'm very mindful of your time. So I leave it to you, but um, feel free to continue and be participate in this as long as you want. But I want to be very mindful and respectful of the time that you request, personal time that you requested. Thank you so much. Uh, with this, can I uh, can I get uh, uh, Mr. R K Mishra? Uh, R K, you have been also involved with uh, the BMLTA and uh, and the functioning. And uh, can you speak a few words about? Uh, can you tell us? Uh, can you hear me, uh, R K? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we, we hope that we can have this beautiful California bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I told you I'm traveling, so I don't have something too beautiful behind me to have put this bridge. So um, yes. I'm on the road. I'm on the road. Uh, so I think uh, Madam Manjula has uh, given very detailed uh, description of what BMLT is and what it is not. It is not um, replacing or contradicting with, uh, you know, you know, MPC, and it is not a comprehensive mobility plan, is essentially something what is its mandate to implement. It is also something which is not going to supersede a planning authority because planning authority essentially makes sure that citywide planning, land use, and otherwise. But what it is going to do is, and what it has not happened in Bangalore, which is an unfortunate thing, uh, is that whatever comprehensive mobility plan becomes part of the planning process is vetted and actually it's implemented. Now, I'll give you some examples. Uh, I mean, this group and people otherwise may not even think these issues and why Bangalore has become so congested. The last major road in Bangalore was made almost 25 years ago. After that, no road has been built neither ring road nor otherwise. And the last road was outer ring road which was built in around 2000. Uh, it was completed around 2000, it started much earlier. Now, if it was part of, uh, you know, our planning uh, process, and by the way, this road, we had so many thoughts whether there should be a bus rapid transit system. We did not even have a metro plan there. When BMR uh, bus rapid transit system came, the metro opposed it. But metro said that, there should be metro. And I think it was the right thing, but metro did not have a plan for it. So metro did not want BRTS to come. But when we asked metro, do you have a plan of metro coming there? He said, no, we don't have plan. Then we came up with this so-called innovative financing scheme on outer ring road, metro. Then metro, should it go to airport or should it stop at Kyatra? I mean, I can go on and on. Then we created this bus priority lane, which got removed in like one year, within one year. Uh, without being of much use because of the COVID, because Metro came in. So this kind of haphazard work which we have been doing, and of course, uh, less we said about BESCOM and B, you know, uh, BWSSB plans. So frankly speaking, BBMP or any other authority gets to know about what other departments are planning and going to dig the road and all that, only when they submit the application for cutting. And by then it's too late because you can't even say no because Water and power is as important to city as transport. So I think I give a very, 
I mean, real life examples for people to understand what is the purpose of BMLTA. That's why I give something which every common man understands that why BMLTA is needed. Now, BMLTA will make sure that all this is coordinated. BMLTA will ensure that this is all coded into the each agency's plan. The work will be done by agencies. Water pipeline will be put by BWS is the only. Uh, metro will be built by BMRCL. Unless the whole thing becomes transport for London and everything in mud, it might happen in 10, 20, 30 years. We don't know. So from that point of view, I think BMLTA is, and it doesn't take away anybody's power. There's a lot of speculation. This will become a super body and now uh, commissioners and ministers have power which will go, which is not wrong, which is not right. It will not take anybody's power. It will make everybody's life easier if I put in one word. And citizens will benefit. Unfortunately, it has taken too long a time. And given that other cities have not succeeded, I think it is a bigger opportunity for Bangalore to make it work. And Bangalore can do it. Once we get onto it, I think it is possible to do it. So failure or less success of other cities should not deter us from doing it. And more details, Madam, has already given. And further discussions we can have. But I think there is no reason for us to do that. But I understand from the government sources, uh, I mean, government seems to be uh, willing to uh, take it through. Let's hope it does happen. Thank you, RK. I see Madam Manjula is still there. I have one more question for her. Uh -huh. Since she's there, I, I want to make maximum use of her presence. Um, Pooja spoke about the open mobility network that Kochi has implemented. And this is, by the way, done by an organization which is based out of Bangalore. So, uh, Beckin and uh, which is uh, which has been uh, sort of uh, mentored by another neil kenny and various others so um, i just want to know ma'am if you're still online uh, do you have any plans for open mobility because even without waiting for bmlta we can still have open mobility uh, working so that seamlessly data can be shared across uh, across various modes of transport which will make uh, which will give the ability for various startups uh, to create applications on top of it and you know what kind of magic happened when you know, UPI came in what kind of fintech magic happened and we are the fintech leaders of the world uh, so uh, uh, madam manjula if you can just throw some light do you have any thoughts of open network for uh, ba bangalore um we have had a presentation by uh you know beckon and um you know we're looking into that you know how do we ensure the similar to what kochi has done but right now we are still in a very preliminary stage i cannot say that we have into advanced stage of planning but it is in the process we are uh, you know trying to ensure that uh trying to work towards uh, such a thing so it's in the initial stage and what we have tried to do is in terms of, as you mentioned about sharing of data, et cetera, we have now tried to bring data of various organizations onto GIS. Um, we, we are calling it transit GIS. So we are getting data from various stakeholders and trying to put it in a common GIS platform, which is part of KGIS, which is almost uh, you know in, in an advanced stage. So, so that you know, for planning the, all the related data is available at one point. The third thing we are trying to do is to do some kind of data standardization because we find the data that is collected, you know, it's given so much of different, different nomenclatures, et cetera, that we are doing. But the what you have mentioned is something like a mobility as a service. So that kind of a framework. So we are working on it, but still we are in an initial stage, I must admit. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Madam. Uh, uh, but I'm sure uh, uh, we we have Bangalore has under your leadership taken a number of bold steps. Uh, so uh, I think the next big one will be uh, open mobility network, and we really hope that we can see something uh, very creative for Bangalore because that will make a I think a very big difference to the city. Uh, even while we battle through BMLTA, etc. Uh, I think this will make a huge difference to the city, just like uh, UPI made a huge difference to uh, fintech and how fintech has taken um, Indian fintech companies uh, have 
made such a difference and made it so inclusive. Uh, I think uh, uh, open mobility can be to transport what UPI was to fintech uh, and inclusivity. So um, with that, uh, let me uh, uh, let me bring in uh, Mr. Uh, Sat Satyajit Alikutram. I know he has worked closely with uh, DULT, with Madam Manjula and others. Uh, Satyajit, can you uh, uh, talk to us a little bit about um, you know uh, your experience with other parts of the world and uh, what you see uh, uh, as the next steps? Yeah, I, uh, I think thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I think I've heard enough uh, of, um, I mean, the other speakers have actually admirably well articulated as to what's the current status. So I don't want to add to the collective lamentation. So I'll just pick <laughs> up on one particular word uh, from the panel, um, from the chat. I think one person has rightly said the political will to implement is also important. I think for whatever uh, euphemism we are using, that I find has been lacking. Despite on paper, each of the political parties actually claiming they are for integrated, coordinated, better public transport. Over the last few months, I've engaged with the parties directly, and I found that agility to engage mostly better with parties like the newly formed Bengaluru Navanirmana Party or the Amadmi Party. We basically they have said, yeah, this is fantastic. We are putting so much public money into these projects. If we don't talk about coordination or efficiency of this investment so that the outcomes are what we intend it to be, then there's no point. I'll give a simple example. BMRCL's station and average station cost costs about 100 crores. If in the absence on their goal sheet that they have to make it like an TOD zone, like six minute cycling, six minute walking sort of peripheral zone, which may actually cost them four crores extra. That's all. Four crores over 100 crores is not a problem for them, but it's not on their goal sheet today. If it was in their goal sheet, they will do it. So BMLTA has been almost like uh, the missing vital cog in the institutional framework for the last 15 years. And what we see on ground is basically the problem uh, which we are all facing at congestion is mostly for uh, you know putting the horse before, cart before the horse, that sort of a thing. Mr. Mishra mentioned about uh, how uh, roads are not being built. It's almost like you think roads as an afterthought after you approve and lay out. Uh, for us, development has been reduced to buy acres of land, convert it into 40, 60 sites, and 30 feet road and 60 feet road. So we have stopped there. BMTC, oh yeah, we'll provide it when there is a petition. Just to get one route in BMTC today to a place is a big ordeal because accountability is very, very co. I mean, there is, uh, let me be bold and say there is no accountability for any of the mobility outcomes today in any of the institutions. BMRCL can run its trains 20 minutes late and give a bland bureaucratic statement, technical reasons we couldn't run the trains. Nobody's asked them as to why it is so, why is not, uh, why it couldn't be better? Are you benchmarked with the best in class? So I'll stop there and I'll tell about my international experience. I've actually seen TFL grow from infancy. I had the opportunity to work in the UK for almost two decades. Uh, when TFL was formed, the same sort of reluctance, which uh, rightly Madam Manjula said, was there among local authorities there. Oh, are they usurping my authority? Are we going to lose some of our functions on bus planning and other things? But once TFL started saying, hey, we are going to fund you. We are actually going to give the strength of a collective planning effort and a collective funding effort so that your dependency on cars will reduce. And so much so, within four years, they were able to do a bold experiment after Singapore to introduce the congestion charge. Day one of congestion charge, a simple five pound charge to enter the city center, reduced 30% of the traffic, 30%. And that's the magic when empowered authority can do. And as Mr. Mishra rightly said, and you also rightly mentioned, this is the tech capital of the world, not just India. Things can be done if we can get our bureaucracy to respond faster and our political leaders to ask the right question to the bureaucracy as to why is it not done. Today, we seem to be going round and round in the same circles. And uh, I think uh, earlier Pooja said, if Kochi can do it, why can't we? Yeah, we can do it much better than Kochi because we've got the wherewithal, we've got an ecosystem, we've got everything going. 
I mean, uh, as she said, BJP has got its in manifesto. AAP is supporting on paper. BNP supports on paper. Umta is the concept of Congress party. So I have not left any political parties here. So what is missing? So if in this panel, which is a political action committee, you are not able to narrow down and say, where exactly, I pick on part, one particular word, scrutiny. Madam Manjula said that thing. What further scrutiny after 16 years? How much does it take? Is there a timeline? When we talk about SLB, service level uh, agreements with BMTC, is there a service level with our administration as to when a bill will be passed? I mean, I ask this honest question. With that, I stop. We can do it better than London if you are empowered. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Satyajit. And let me bring in Harish, uh, who is uh, an advocate, very, uh, uh, very clued into uh, the parliamentary affairs and how these things happen. Harish, you did hear uh, Madam Manjula. Uh, she said it has already gone through legal scrutiny once. Can you tell us, given the state, the advanced state of this bill, uh, now what would be the key steps to have uh, that we sh as citizens should look at uh, should happen to ensure that this bill at least gets presented to parliament? What would be the other steps? Uh, at the outset, uh, for the legislature to make a law, there are two modes. One is the ordinance route when the legislature is not in session. That's the route with, uh, through which uh, the government can promulgate an ordinance through the governor under the under Article 213 of the Constitution of India when there is no session going on, on uh, by the legislature. The other is the regular uh, legislative process through which uh, a bill is introduced and debated, deliberated, considered, and passed, and then it is assented by the governor and then it becomes this bill becomes an act in the present scenario uh, what madam manjula's uh, made a statement is that uh, the bill has undergone scrutiny it has gone to law department and thereafter nothing has happened and see normally a bill of this nature will be originated from the udd it will then go to parliamentary affairs department law and parliamentary affairs which he said it has gone to law department then they will give it a legislative framework in the way the bill should be drafted. And then the bill will be sent back to the concerned department, the UDD. There afterwards, UDD, the bill uh, will, will be piloted by the concerned minister and it should come before the cabinet in a cabinet meeting, which is periodically held. And once the cabinet gives a nod, then this bill will again go to parliamentary section for it to get the final final framework of the legislative uh, mode of the bill. And then the bill will uh, be introduced in the house by the concerned minister. And then the debate and deliberation happen and then it gets passed and then assented, it becomes an act. As of now, see the legislative session is likely to happen, budget session is over. And uh, the next session is the monsoon session, which is likely to happen during August. First uh, uh, midweek of August after Independence Day, probably, probably, and may go on till September last week. It will be a very short duration session, unlike the budget session, which is for a month long. So uh, before it, uh, before the session starts, this cabinet meeting will be there during which this bill, which is probably uh, already vetted by a law department, as mentioned by my, Madam Manjula, uh, will have to be pushed through by the concerned minister to bring it before the. Uh, the agenda of the cabinet meeting. And if that doesn't happen before this uh, 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 monsoon session dates are announced, then this bill will not uh, enter the house at all. See, the uh, political will, as Satyajit said, and somebody in the chat has also mentioned about political will. Uh, if the government has a political will that it should, uh, and it feels that the need of the hour is to bring in this bill and make it a law, then uh, they can, they would have probably even used the ordinance route in emergency situations. Since, uh, if they consider that mobility is an emergency situation to decongest the Bangalore traffic and, and to see that there is uh, smooth uh, traffic norms and uh, coordination between the seven stakeholder agencies which are primarily responsible for mobility plan of Bangalore city. Otherwise, they will have to go through this, this regular bill process route. 
and i don't see that happening in the in this monsoon session that's my assessment uh, out of my experience of seeing several sessions and uh, knowing the legislature from close quarters uh, so this can only then be moved probably in the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, winter session which is likely to happen in belgaum because that may be the last winter session which may be uh, which may be held in belgaum because after which there will be people uh, the government uh, will be looking forward towards the election they'll get into election mode from january onwards so they don't want to skip the Bang belgaum session because uh, as of the uh, the uh, elections to follow shortly thereafter so if it does not happen in the belgaum session i don't think it can ever happen during the, the tenure of this government and at all during the next budget session because next budget session will be just a just a, uh, 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 so, uh, it's a routine process where three months vote on account budget will have to be presented and vote on account will be taken because before they go for election. And with these elections of local body spending and BBMP election also likely to take place, all this code of conduct will come into place. All these things also will will uh, will, will uh, have to be looked into to, to push this bill to the legislature so that it, uh, uh, it it goes through and even after a bill is tabled in the legislature it can be referred to a select committee or a joint uh, legislative committee also also uh, so the, this the law department has taken care of it and done it but it can still be a house committee can be constituted to look into the bill also so that may further delay the process of the of the uh, legislation getting through the uh, the, uh, the legislative houses and then going to the governor for or his attempt so given the scenario at the moment, I don't see this happening in this monsoon session. Thank you, uh, Harish, for that analysis. Let's hope that Hello. Sorry, I think I just uh, uh, I, get, I just dropped off. Uh, th thank you, uh, Harish. If if, if uh, Ashwat Naran had joined this uh, thing, perhaps uh, uh, he would have agreed with yes. what I said, and probably he, he would also we are have. Still hoping effort. he is right now with the vice president today. Uh, we are still hoping that he is in a meeting with the vice president today. Uh, vice president of India is here uh, visiting. We are still hoping that he will join. He had joined briefly, but uh, yeah. Uh, my my suggestion would be you need. Uh, I think you should meet the chief minister, who is in charge of the city development. Yes, um, uh, RK. I, uh, uh, you have, you said you need to leave for the airport. Would you like to make any closing remarks before you leave? So, um, I think uh, I agree with uh, Harish. Um, uh, the gov the will the political will is uh, seems to be lacking uh, and if it does not come in this monsoon session uh, belgaum session will not take something like this my belief is so we really need to push hard for this to come in uh, monsoon session and frankly speaking i think if at all there is a resistance it's because of misunderstanding people have uh, political people maybe they're thinking their power authority will go but actually not the case. So I think if it is explained, um, maybe to Chief Minister, uh, so I agree if we could convince him that there's something important needs to be his legacy as well. Um, that would be the, I think, uh, uh, call for action. And I think BPAC should, uh, should take a lead. Yeah. Uh, My suggestion would be you meet the Chief Minister during this month before the dates of the legislative session is out. 
Yes, we will do that. Uh, uh, I'm, I, uh, whatever from my side, any help from my side, I'm willing to, to extend that cooperation to all. I, I have also been in touch with the chief secretary um, and she also happens to be the member chairman of the BMLTA uh, in her position. Um, uh, and she has, uh, unfortunately, she could not join us today, though she was really trying and we're still hoping that she might be able to take off 10 minutes. But uh, these are busy times for her. Uh, but she has assured us that she will do her level best and follow up with the chief minister and um, uh, and uh, also with uh, urban development and uh, so uh, but i think we, we should meet everybody. as a civic body we should meet um, yes, in yes, addition yes. to them it gives a fresh impetus to the uh, to the uh, bureaucracy to also take it forward absolutely. with the pm's office absolutely absolutely and um, uh, I just mentioned this about Chief Secretary because she was, we were hoping that she would be one of the panel members and in her position as the chairperson of BMLTA, she could throw some light, but she has you know, personally assured me that she will, she has just taken over and she will do her level best to push this with the Chief Minister and she will you know, talk to Manjula, she will talk to um, all the uh, parties concerned and get herself completely briefed. And she said, rest assured, I will try my level best. So I just wanted all, I, I the, have one more suggestion all the citizens to know uh, know this. And I see Dr. Ashwat Narayan has logged in. Uh, now Sharad, do you know if, uh, uh, if he's ready to speak, then uh, uh, we should uh, give, this, uh, give the floor to uh, Dr. Na Ashwat Narayan. Namaskara. Namaskara, sir. Namaskara, sir. Namaskara, sir. Namaskara, sir. Namaskara, sir. Namaskara, sir. Namaskara, It's a very busy day. Thank you very much, sir. You are the one who gave so much importance to this. And when we brought transport for London to, for discussion, that was the first time we discussed very seriously. You brought 40 people together, uh, officers together. I know how much it means to you, sir. Haley, sir. Ayn maada kya agathe? Uh, <laughs> I good uh, evening to all the dignitaries and all the panelists and Madam Revati Harish for taking all the interest from BPAC to organize today's discussion, a virtual uh, conference on uh, Bangalore Metropolitan. Land Transport Authority, which is a long pending, which has been much softer after legislation for the city of Bangalore, we really appreciate. And at the same time, how best we can make it commuter centric and uh, ensure that the commuting time reduces drastically and bring a lot of coordination between the various modes of transportation. In this direction, uh, probably our Honorable Chief Minister is very keen is very keen to have the multimodal transport system and to address the traffic congestion in the city of Bangalore. For that, whatever required measures to be brought in to bring in coordination to decongest the city of Bangalore and to strengthen the public transport system, to strengthen the public transport system, you all of you know very well, the metro has been given topmost priority, but due to various reasons, uh, the pace was not to the expected level. Now the pace has picked up and the metro second phase is going on in a great speed and pace is picked up and it will complete within no time. And with regard to the metro third phase also, it's going to start. Whatever required the land acquisition has been going on and already the work is progressing. And along with that, uh, with regard to the suburban railway, suburban railway also already the foundation has been laid and a lot of groundwork already is it will take you the am i audible yes Hello? yes little briefly oh. yeah, you're audible yes, sir. you're audible yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir so we are giving topmost priority and we're going in for the implementation of the suburban uh, railway implementation has been given topmost priority 
and with regard to the metro uh, already the pace has picked up and with regard to the bmtc we are trying to already uh, the procurement of the electric bus has been already ordered and we need to further give a lot of impetus to the bmtc and the congestion and the number of vehicles have been increasing drastically it's a greatest concern how best we can make uh, motorable and make it sustainable and commute time can be reduced these are the most important issues and we along with this the peripheral ring road has is uh, also been taken up and within no time i think probably uh, we are called for the expression of interest and we have invited a lot of parties to come and participate and with regard to the str also strr from dabas pet and old madras road is also been taken up to decongest the entire city and peripheral ring road also will come as a great solution to de decongest the city so all these measures have been taken along with the, the legislation of the unified you uh, know i'll take up this matter with the honorable cm and see how best we can uh, pursue and do it as early as possible sir bmt bmlt a bill lo ee ee mungaru adiveshnadalli alli enadra move madak avakasha idya thamma anisike alli can you move push for this during this monsoon session cabinet meeting so that at least it uh, comes in the agenda for the cabinet meeting ಖಂಡಿತ ಖಂಡಿತ ನಾನು ಹರೀಶ್ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಸನ್ಮಾನ್ಯ ಮುಖ್ಯಮಂತ್ರಿಗಳ ಹತ್ರ ಮಾತಾಡಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಅರ್ಬನ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಎ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಅವರ ಹತ್ರ ಮಾತಾಡಿ ಎ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಅವರ ಹತ್ರ ಮಾತಾಡಿ ನಾನು ತಕ್ಷಣ ಈ ಕ್ರಮವನ್ನು ಏನ್ ವಹಿಸ್ಬೇಕಾ ಇದೆಯೋ ಕ್ರಮವನ್ನು ವಹಿಸುವಂತ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಖಂಡಿತ ನಮ್ಮ ಕರ್ತವ್ಯ ಇದು ಏನ್ ಒಳ್ಳೇದು ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕಾಗುತ್ತೋ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಅಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಎನ್ಶೂರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ ಎವರ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೆಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಪುಟ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ uh physically what we can do to decongest four important junction a ball a tin factory and uh, silk port junction and as well as gorgonta palya all these four junction also will be taken up on priority already government our honorable cm has earmarked the fund and is uh, taking up the project on the top most priority and with regard to the bill also and public mass transportation system also you know very well uh, we have taken up it very seriously and we have been working in this direction needful things will be done yes sir, sir. with your support can we meet the chief uh, minister with yeah. bpac and other civic agencies with your sir support and uh, coordination can we meet the cm to just uh, brief him also on the yeah, de definitely de yeah definitely definitely so yava heltira andre we will come along with you yeah definitely nano ಪ್ಲಾನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ರೇವತಿ ಅವರ ಹತ್ರ ಮಾತಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಟು ರೇವತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಪ್ಲಾನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ರೀಚ್ ಔಟ್ i think uh, uh, the, the projects ನೀವು ಹೇಳಿದಿರಾ lots of very big projects have been uh, uh, passed or even completed in process of completion etc main thing is coordination irbeku so that the benefits true benefits of the entire investment are seen because as somebody uh, satyajit said you may invest 300 crores but the last 4 crores will be on some last mile connectivity or 5 10 crores will be on last mile connectivity so athara uh, if you have the bmlta they can look at it in a more comprehensive manner so that the uh, putting the time for mobility and ease of mobility as the parameters for developing a transportation plan they can work towards those kinds of goals so um adikostra sir i think uh, we will really as citizens we have several people uh, so, so much interest we have over 60 people 65 people who have joined in that will tell you how how important this this is for the citizens of bangalore uh, sitting there so late in the night and we really appreciate you have come for this call i know how busy you are today and i know how you are co how committed you are sir in the monsoon session ali if you are able to introduce this this will be a very big thing big win for the citizens of bangalore and for everybody sir i have one last suggestion narsatan and sir if not the, if not the legislative route of regular process of the bill at least if you can push for an ordinance to be issued the decongesting bangalore is an emergency also as far as mobility plan is concerned so that uh, legislative framework can be given in the uh, winter session by a regular process of the bill so that an ordinance can at least be issued 
ಅಂತ ವೆನ್ ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಿ ಸೆಷನ್ ಎಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಿ ಮಾನ್ಸೂನ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಎಂಡ್ಸ್ ಒಂದು for this bill there is no resistance from no resistance from any political parties only thing is we wanted the, all the different agencies to come together so we are trying to work out that uh, politically all parties are committed so no, to, that is the best uh, news i hope it will be the headlines for tomorrow's news that all <laughs> political parties are aligned on this this is the biggest news you have given us today so you can have an all party meeting for this bill <laughs> no no need no. but the government is having the will we will have the wait no 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 you and you we can take it forward yen aden yen samasya nilla we will will i'll sit along with the concerned department and see what has happened so far and uh, we'll pursue we'll pursue and, uh, and we'll try to uh, get this implemented as early as possible and i'll get back to you sir so sure, today uh, i was told i just saw in the evening Uh, bpac <laughs> it has taken the the, tra- the bangalore metropolitan transport la- authority uh, bill planning you now transport uh, authority bill has to be brought in umta so definitely will work it out sir definitely will work out and uh, i was not aware today's discussion otherwise i would have found out everything in details what was the status and i would have come back to you and uh, told very clearly uh, when where how what uh, how much time it will require when we can complete every timeline also i was uh, would have been able to give but anyway i'll go back uh, look into it and uh, get back to you all of you thank so you our bangalore sir all of us have to all of us have to take care of our first yes, yes our bangalore we can't let it down we yes. need to do our best when given a opportunity yes thank you very much sir thank you, uh, thank you. Thank you. Have... yes sir thank you thank you revathi madam thank you thank you arish thank you thank you sir always uh, revathi madam always arish is an always fast track only sir yes we will try to fast track this uh, we will also request all parties uh, political parties to talk about it so that since everybody is aligned this is the biggest headline news for today uh, yes. i think it was worth that discussion that one sentence is uh, worth this entire one and a half hour discussion that there is no major issue that any party is facing that oh. that is the biggest news agenda all barang maadi sir cabinet ge sathi ashte yes sir <laughs> yes sir na nan kade end yen bekaru heli na barthi ek kandida kandida arish re kandida so, Uh, we have uh, uh, mr uh, subaya who is a civic leader uh, uh, who is also part of the panel we wanted one citizen uh, he is also an urban planner uh, he is a, a civic activist uh, plus a, a civic leader so uh, subaya uh, given all the various ha- uh, hats and he is an architect by profession urban land, land planner uh, urban planner by profession So, uh, do you want to offer any comments on this? You have heard these fantastic uh, comments may, made by everybody, especially Dr. Ashwath Narayan, who has given us a lot of hope about this bill. Yeah, I think, ma'am, uh, the, the fact that the, the ministers confirmed that you know all parties are aligned gives us a good hope, and I think there is no drawback in the bill now. I think there will be. I mean, we can, as you uh, last time also mentioned, if you are working for something perfect, it will never come. The good is always the. is something that we have to do with right now and uh, the biggest thing is we know all agencies have their own planning skills but unless there's a coordination agency with uh, capability of planning and doing this inter coordination between these agencies it's going to be a challenge to put any large infrastructure in place otherwise we will have these standard problems where we talk i think the biggest thing came when we also did a stamp program 2018 where the station mobility access plan when we had to integrate a bus stop with a metro station or to see how the process thing was we saw that agencies can't talk to each other even if they talk there's nobody who says i can stand there and get these things done i can plan these facilities for you i can help you coordinate so this bill will actually put an agency in place which can help in all these things and they also need to bring in a lot of planners and put in a you know full time agency has to have an office and a, a team which does all these planning and coordination i think that's that's the need of the r and even for citizens to approach let us say we want to approach a particular uh, uh, transportation authority it's always easier if there's one agency which can talk to you know multiple agencies and get some things done so the, i mean the I mean, the need of the bill i think everybody is in is in agreement so there's no further talk on that yeah 
I think we, uh, uh, Dr. Ashwat Narayan, would you like to say anything else in response? No, nothing, madam. Uh, what Mr. Subaya is telling is right. All the agencies, they'll have all of them work in silos only. <laughs> that is a kind of, you know, each person, each department has got autonomy. Right. So, right. getting so, together all the all the agencies on one platform is a way forward. I definitely agree with Subaya. Uh, all the agencies need to come together to coordinate, to ensure whatever uh, work between the different agencies, the work will be there. The coordination has to be given priority. So we need to work with each other to ensure to bring things on place and to bring synergy, coordination. Right. Uh, we have one. Uh, um, we have Srinivas Alwali from uh, Janagraha. I came to other function, man. Can I leave now? Srinivas one, one last question. Srinivas, one last Srinivas, question. Srinivas, always, my good friend, always I'm in touch with him. <laughs> Srinivas, one, one last question to you, sir, from Mr. Srinivas Alwali, who wanted to say. Uh, uh, I can get back to you. I can get back to you. Already, I read the place. Uh, vehicle road is blocking. Okay. 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 Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Sunan, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, Revati, I have one suggestion. Uh, one question. One, one. Uh, just a minute, Harish. Uh, Srinivas. Yes. Sorry, I think Dr. Ashwat Narayan had to leave. So, uh, getting him like this itself was a Herculean task. He was in between meeting with uh, Vice President today. And uh, very uh, good of him to have given us yes. a, a call mm. in that brief two minutes that he was in the car. Uh, I think we are lucky, but we got some nuggets of good information. Uh, he has publicly uh, said that there is no political opposition. So I think that itself gives us some cheer. And we should really, as citizen groups, we must come together and uh, push this very, very hard. Uh, Srinivas, would you like to say something? Srini, you are on mute. Yeah, uh, Devati, uh, uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, or because uh, we need to put a larger from the civil society to bring this into reality. And uh, uh, it is a very important uh, you know, part of our democracy that we keep uh, asking for and uh, hold our elected representatives and bring the experts and get us together. So kudos to you and be back for uh, uh, doing that just now uh, in this and even uh, earlier last week, uh, we had a good session. I'm glad to hear what uh, Dr. Ashwat Narayan said. Uh, like you mentioned, we have been pestering him for these things for many, many years, and he's always been a good Bangalore MLA, good Bangalore minister. And, uh, you know, I'm glad to hear that he will personally take uh, leadership in trying to uh, get a meeting with the CM and push this forward. I think uh, as, a, uh, as a public transport uh, uh, champion as a champion for uh, Bengaluru sustainable mobility. I, I can tell you that I feel pretty positive about our, our future. Uh, after so many years of uh, trying to do uh, things like flyovers and road wide, now has got uh, all the all the in place right now. The suburban train, the metro, the bus. We need a lot more investment in the bus, but there is 12 bus lanes. And there are cycle lanes popping up and all of that. Footpaths also are getting a lot of attention from BBMP. A lot more needs to be done. Everything needs can be done better. So I feel like all the things are falling in place. And three to five years from now, the bad traffic of Bengaluru will be a bad dream that people used to talk about and no longer the reality. At least the optimist in me tells me that that's what's going to happen. The only missing piece in this entire puzzle is now who is going to tie all these things together in terms of planning and coordination. And that's why BMLT is very important. If you got all these uh, uh, different agencies to get moving and doing things faster, you also need to make sure that they are uh, well coordinated. Every metro station and rail station must have a good integration. Every metro have a good uh, uh, local loop, uh, uh, mini bus or bus service and paratransport and all that. People should be able to walk without the fear of falling in a, in a footpath. These things need to happen. And uh, with DALT being in Bangalore, a unique organization that is really focused on sustainable mobility and DALT playing a role within the BMLT ambit, I am very optimistic and hopeful that it will make a real difference to the quality of life for all of us in the city, rich and poor, 
those that are in private transport and public transport and you use our resources optimally so if we make this push to get it done in the monsoon session like rk was saying like mr harish was saying we got to put all our energy into getting the bill tabled in the monsoon session tabling in the session means that the 28 mlas of bengaluru will get an opportunity to discuss debate and bring in any of their own thoughts because they are the elected representatives of all of us and each of us can also work with the legislators individually and give them more input and that is a democratic process we should push for uh, tabling the bill ta having a healthy discussion on the floor of the house and because it has been gone through so many rounds of review i am one of those that hoping that you know the the impossible best is the enemy of the possible good like so bhai i was saying i strongly believe in that i hope that the monsoon session will see a good discussion and then we will get the bmlta and not on paper but actually running so that will be the challenge after the bill gets passed because we have a lot of great legislation but after that what happens is another whole ball game but we have to continue this energy not only get the bill tabled and a discussion happened and the bill passed and uh, signed by the governor followed by implementation execution drafting of the rules and actually the body of bmlta should be there and i urge you and all of us in this uh, call to stay together and see through that that happens yes thank yes you. absolutely uh, uh, thank you very much we are uh, uh, right on the dot at 7:30 and i think we've had some great sessions i hope the press will cover the fact that there is no political opposition there is no other opposition to the bill everybody realizes that a lot of big infrastructure is planned uh, minister himself has said that this is required i got confirmation from madam secretary who uh, could not be present today but she said she will personally follow up uh, in her capacity as bm bmlta chairman chairperson so we have all stars aligned so uh, it is for us to lose so i think uh if we lose this that that's really stupid of us we should try and push this to the uh, monsoon session yes last word harish and last, then last, last suggestion one is uh, let's meet all these uh, seven an uh, agencies chairpersons the the bmtc bda all these people who are part of this uh, uh, this bmlta bill, bill process who are part of this committee so let us meet them also to push this and also meet all the 28 mlas individually who are representing bangalore city this push needs to uh, to gain momentum otherwise this monsoon session nothing yes, will sir. happen we'll do that we'll do that right i think with that we will call this session to a close thank you all our dear panelists uh, we had a great session and i think uh, to top it all uh, dr ashwath narayan made all our one and a half hours of deliberations worth it uh by saying that there is no opposition he fully supports it he has always been supportive of this four years ago bpac had a session for him introductory session for him with uh, transport for london where he be, be presented what what the vision of a unified transport authority could be and from that we have come a long way and i think uh, uh, let's hope uh, let's keep pushing for this our immediate goal is to try and push for uh this to be introduced in the monsoon session and harish thank you very much for all your inputs subaya for your inputs and uh, madam manjula of course and uh, mr rk uh, mishra and satyajit all of you have contributed and all the other round table experts who have uh, given us such valuable su suggestions last week so that we could hold the session today now um, amidst lot of difficulty drop offs etc etc but uh, i think it was a great session um, uh, yeah and uh, yes i think we are all unified on this and uh, thank you all very much uh, all the best to all of us thank you thank you revathi all the best one last picture from everybody whoever is left somebody taking pictures Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I think even the questions. There have been some good questions. You can put them forward. I think most of them have been covered in the. Uh, yes, talk. we have been uh, we have been covering it as we yes. go along. There have been some good questions, and we have tried to cover everything. Yes.
thank you very much everybody have a good night uh, thank, thank you. you thank you thank you thank you all thank, thank you, you thank you for hosting have a good weekend all of you bye yeah. thank you thank you sir thank you for that